Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Wednesday, March 28th, 2018, and this is episode 49. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. So we'll give you headlines of action, hope, awareness, and yes, Maybe a little lulls, and we definitely have a, a nice little lulzy story for you today. You can get show notes at istate.tv slash h049, which is linked in the video description, whether you're watching YouTube or Facebook. Today's show is titled Snitches Get Social Shaming and the Right Hates It. On today's episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, Snitch Protection Patrols, Liquid Electronics, FBI iPhone Hackers, Youth Gun Control Fail, and more. And I'll just tell you, I just want to say this. This show, there's, uh, I usually try to have like at least half of the stories be good news stories because, you know, the whole fear porn thing. There's plenty of good news out there. I think that you're going to be very happy with this show because most of the stories today are actually good news story. And with that little uh, setup here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, prepare yourselves for today's 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. College Group Forms Protection from Snitches Coalition. And this is this is the story. If you're watching the Facebook version of the show and not the YouTube version, you would have heard me already trying to set the story up. This is a complicated story. And I, I debated, like, do I do I write about this story? Do I I'm basically making this my top story of the day. I have three main headlines on the front of our site, which are is which is action, hope. And awareness. This is the main headline for the action part. So, uh, well, I'll get to the story and you'll see why. This is, this is not a cut and dry story. So there's a group, uh, and I'll put it in quotes, anarchist group at the University of Pittsburgh that has created a free service called the Didn't See SHT Crowd Group. I'm trying to keep headlines you may have missed family friendly. So, The crew says, we're sick of seeing good kids get expelled, arrested, or otherwise screwed over because some holier-than-thou bootlicker decided to F up someone's life. Although they didn't say F, they said something else. So some of the actions that group says that they're going to stop are people who reported graffiti artists. Uh, uh, people who are turning in uh, others for making darknet mail orders. Now, if you're new to iState.tv, let me just remind you, darknet is uh, the dark web, uh, uh, also called the deep web, and I call all of that the liberty web, so whatever. Uh, uh, for, uh, uh, people who snitch on people for distributing flyers uh, and and people who try to get people in trouble for holding events without permits, and uh, also going after the RAs. The that that's a resident. Uh, what what is what does RA stand for? Resident administrator or whatever it is. Or it's, it's a student uh, in uh, a dorm who is the one in charge of governing the students or something. Uh, anyway, going after these RAs who conduct random door ser searches, dorm searches. Now, I want to add this caveat. I don't know much about this group, so I don't want to say this is this is not an endorsement of this group, and it's it's not. A, I don't I don't I don't know enough about it. They call themselves anarchists, you know. I don't. I know not all people who call themselves quote unquote anarchists would necessarily fit into that definition for me, but I'm also not an anarcho absolutarian in the definition of the word anarchist, but still. I don't know enough about this group to say whether I agree with what this group stands for at all. I chose to highlight this story not so much because 
I might agree with everything about what this group may or may not be doing, but because this group is taking proactive action to diminish the effect, at least in part, of people who are trying to harm people who've not directly harmed others. Now, the group, you know, some of the things that it cited, which I, I highlighted above, of those, you know, the reporting people for graffiti, you know, if you're damaging property, do I, I really... I don't endorse damaging property. Uh, you can get into a long debate about well, what the nature of "quote unquote" public property is, and whether if public property is legitimately owned or not legitimately owned. If you kind of fall on the side that it's not legitimately owned, you might look at that as a victimless crime as well. Uh, but anyway, they also include trying to uh, stop people for turning in students who stole textbooks, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't support that. Uh, that I don't, I don't, I don't support stealing. So from what I see, though, uh, most of what this group says that's about, and by this group, I mean this particular, this narrow part of this group, this group that uh, it's got that title, the didn't see SHT crew. Most of what I see from what they're saying about this group, uh, the action that they're trying to prevent is protecting people from being targeted by authoritarian trolls who are trying to punish people for not following arbitrary rules, rules that attempt to prohibit actions that do not directly hurt others. And, of course, the sensationalist reaction to this group by conservative blogs uh, is uh, very revealing of them. It reveals their deep-seated law and order, authoritarian nature, the which is underlies much of American conservatism. So I, I, I'll just, I just get to the to little highlight here. I don't want to sp spend the whole show dealing with this story, although I could. Uh, I could say that about a lot of stories. But this is from Legal Inter Insurrection, which is actually uh, highlighting a blurb from the Daily Caller. So they say, Left-wing college students in America are developing into Mao's red guard right before our eyes. Now, did you did you hear that? Did you hear that word, Mao's left or red red guard? So, yeah, the 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 Mao's red guard uh, they went around killing people for questioning communism and Mao, among other things. How does uh, group forming? which is, and what they're using, they're, they're going to be using social shaming and they're going to be conducting these uh, spontaneous interviews with these uh, authoritarian trolls as a way to, to let the whole community know who the authoritarian snitchy trolls are. So how is that related to Mao's Red Guard? I don't get it. It's, uh, it's quite hyperbolic in nature. Uh, we'll probably talk more about this tomorrow on his daily Thursday with Lou Sander, because this is kind of this is kind of off the leash kind of activity that we we like to highlight in that in that. So I'll I'll go on to the next story. 3D printing liquid electronics. Berkeley Lab is working on 3D printing images with water that could lead to liquid electronic printing. So this is from 3dprint.com. All liquid 3D printing has potential for liquid electronics applications. Aside from 3D printed innovations only visible in water and using 3D printer to create images with water, good old HTO has not exactly been at the forefront in the 3D printing world until now. Researchers from the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, Berkeley Lab, manage the university... Well, I don't care about all the managed by stuff. Recently determined a way to 3D print structures that are made completely of liquid materials. The team injects threads of water into silicone oil using a modified 3D printer, actually sculpting, sculpting liquid tubes inside an additional liquid, learning how to create liquid tubes inside another liquid, and then figuring out how to automate the process were crucial advances in getting the method to work properly. Uh, the abstract uh, on, the, on this reads, in part, uh, liquid lacks the spatial order required for advanced functionality. Interfacial assemblies of colloids, however, can be used to shape liquids into complex 3D objects simultaneously forming 2D layers with novel magnetic, plasmonic, or structural properties. You guys following all this? Fully exploiting all liquid systems that are structured by their interfaces would create a new class of uh, biomimetic 
reconfigurable and responsive materials. Yeah. So liquid electronics is, is what you end up with, but amongst other things. How the FBI can encrypt your iPhone anytime at once. This is where you should be hissing and booing. This is this is not a fun story. This is not a good story. So after the San, Ar San Bernardino terror attack, the FBI wanted to break into the iPhone of one of the suspected terrorists. Well, that was 19 in 2015. Since then, the FBI doesn't need to go to iPhone to break into your phone. They have a lot of options now that enable them to do that without the need for a court order requiring iPhone to unlock a user's phone. So this is from fcw.com. How a terrorist iPhone became the poster child for the FBI FBI's encryption challenge. And I'll just get to here. The, 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 the key part here is Motherboard reported on March 24th that the State Department issued a purchase order for Gray Key on March 6th for $15,000. According to the cybersecurity firm Malware Bytes, the Gray Shift's $15,000 offering allows a customer to unlock up to 300 phones. There is also a $30,000 option that does not cap the number of unlockings. Interesting that they picked the 15000 option. I guess that gives us hope. Public records also show that the Drug Enforcement Administration and FBI are also looking into Gray Key and similar IAS hacking tools. On March 8th, both agencies issued separate requests for quotations looking for technology similar to Gray Key's forensic workstation. So, yeah, they, they don't need to go to iPhone or anybody else anymore. They can just use these services. Yay! American youth reject more gun control laws despite all the rallies. After all the bluster and shrill cries and awkward fascist-like fist pumps of the youth supremacist rallies demanding the state control more of our lives, after all the millions of dollars being pumped in by one of the 1% of the 1% that sees a real advantage in empowering the state to protect their businesses from competition... It seems the gun-grabbing cattle car guide in waiting clubs have failed to win over the key demographic the billionaires have been attempting to use as human shields. After Parkland, after the rallies, less than half of the kids from the ages of 13 to 17 actually favor more gun control laws, according to a USA Today Ipsos poll. So, yeah. Good luck, gun-grabbers. Apparently, you still have a lot of work to do, and you haven't even gotten to the hard part, which is collecting the guns from the millions of pissed-off gun owners. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is your daily lows. You, if you're watching the video, you, you figured out probably just from the title that's on display here that we were at the Daily Lulz moment here with Ring Bearing Owl Attacks Groom's Best Man. So here we have a tired old story. I know, I know, it's such a cliche. One that we've seen so many times before. It's a story of a man who meets a woman, falls in love, decides to get married, has a wedding, picks a best man, picks an owl ring bearer. I mean, who who doesn't? Uh, owl delivers rings, who's owl doesn't, and then decides to viciously turn on the best man, again, as always, turning his wedding into a viral event that gets covered by news outlets around the world. And I think I think I think we covered like three of these owl ring bearer turns on best man stories last week alone. Or, or maybe not. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the details from the Telegraph UK. Al causes chaos at wedding, attacking best man after delivering at wearing rings. All eyes were on the bride and groom, Jenny Aerosmith, 30, and Mark Wood, 29, standing side by side before their closest friends and relatives. And more words and sentences to make it, you know build up emotionally in your mind. Then a beautiful barn owl. Two ring hang rings hanging in a pouch attached to one leg swept majestically down the aisle to a collective gasp of delight. I'm looking for the funny in this, and all I'm getting is like a, a freaking Hallmark movie. As it glided over their heads below the ornate surroundings of the Peckerford Castle Cheshire, it landed as intended on the outstretched arm of the best man. Unfortunately, rather than unclipping the ring seamlessly from its claw, he struggled with the whole charade for a few seconds. Yeah, so he ticked off the owl. It's the best man's fault. 
total derpage. The owl, meanwhile, started to get agitated. Well, yeah, it's like, dude, I did my job. I got it here. Now let's just make this a clean, a clean break. You know, let me go on with my life. But no, Mister Best Man, Mister Mister All Thumbs for Fingers. You know, he bumbled it, and <laughs> that's why the owl got ticked. Happens every time, every freaking time. So the owl, man. Being ticked off as it was, understandably, it turned toward the congregation and flapped its wings repeatedly. That'll teach him. Mr. Wood, who could not believe his friend, was unable to complete the relatively simple task at hand. Yeah, because he's he's got uh, he's got a high percentage of derpage flowing through his veins, obviously. Could not bring himself to watch, laughing as he held his head in his hands. But then, then all hell broke loose. For reasons unknown, the second of the three best men, the groom could not pick a favorite. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. How weak. Weak as water. Weak as water. Who was seated in the front row and also happened to have an in innate fear of birds. Oh, good. That's a good idea. You know, when you're going to pick people that are going to be your best men and you're going to involve birds, pick one of them because you're too much of a wuss to actually pick a favorite. Pick one of them that has an innate fear of birds. Good move. So he outstretched his arm. As quick as a flash, the owl launched itself in his direction, flying straight at his face. Chairs went crashing over. Hey, he, he hey, this is this is their awkward sentence. Chairs went crashing over. He was knocked to the floor. Wow. Gray suited legs and freshly polished boots flailing in the air. Okay, I don't even get that. Okay. But anyway, the, 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 the gist of the thing is that uh, never invite an owl to a wedding if your groom or your best man dude is, is all thumbs. Just, just don't do it. The Amazon's surprising, sprawling, nomadic community history. The natural wonder that is the Amazon Basin. Um, it may not be so natural after all. It may have been created carefully, meticulously, by a close-knit nomadic culture that had a population of, of perhaps a million people or more. The archaeological evidence coming out of the Amazon Basin is increasingly showing this culture existed, and it shatters all of the assumptions archaeologists have previously held regarding the prehistory of the Amazon Basin area. So this is from Inverse.com. A deserted, pristine stretch of the Amazon was home to a million humans. There is a common misconception that the Amazon is an untouched landscape home to scattered nomadic communities. Co-author and University of Exeter postdoctoral research fellow. Holy crap, why can't you just say some dude said? Uh, Jonas Gregorio de Sousa, Ph.D., explained in a statement released Tuesday. Let me restate that. There is a common misconception that the Amazon is an untouched touch landscape, home to scattered nomadic communities, said this dude. This is not the case. We have found that some populations away from the major rivers are much larger than previously thought, and these people had an impact on the environment which we can still find today. The findings indicate that it's time to reevaluate the history of the Amazon. Thousands of people likely lived in these villages, write the, re write the researchers, suggesting that humans played an important role in shaping Amazonian landscapes. Take that, nature lovers! <laughs> Not really. Meet the quantum battery for your quantum computer. Uh, there, you've heard of quantum commuting, but have you heard of quantum batteries? These qubits could be a source of power in and of themselves. This is what physicists in Poland are working on. Don't make any dumb Poland jokes after this story. Physicists in, okay, now it says, we're, we're, we're here, physicists in Italy? What the heck? Hold on. Physicists in Italy have designed a quantum battery that they say could be built using solid state technology. They claim that the device, which could would store energy in the excited state of qubits could change up charge up very quickly thanks to entanglement and that it could provide power for quantum computers over the future i don't know what entanglement is all i know is that they're on to something like 
powerful. The research is part of a push by physicists to study the thermodynamics of very small systems such as atomic or molecular heat engines and refrigerators. And aha, this is where we get the Poland part, right? In 2012, Robert Alicki of the University of Gdansk in Poland and Mark Fan of Levan University in Belgium, Belgium investigated how much work could be extracted reversibly from a quantum mechanical system used to store energy temporarily. They found that by entangling many quantum batteries together, they could boost the energy output per battery such that for very large numbers of them, output approached the upper limit imposed by classical thermodynamics. Listen, that, that TLDR, uh, some Polish dude and some Belgium dude and some Italian dudes think that they can create a quantum battery. And uh, they're writing papers that show that they could create a quantum battery. There you go. That's the real version. Supreme Court rejects tax code, tax code guilt by ignorance. We're going to cover this story in more detail tomorrow. But the upshot of this is the U.S. Supreme Court, by a vote of 7-2, to two, has turned down efforts to prosecute people for obstruction of tax violation investigations if they are unaware that such investigation is even taking place. Yeah, this is going to be in our longer leash files probably One tomorrow minute. on his daily Thursday. Firearms dealer holds build your own AR-15 class classes. So Walden Arms in Marshall, Michigan is showing the U.S. in part how to effectively counter a rising youth supremacist led with billionaire financing gun grabber cult. They're running an out straight outreach program to people who have not already surrendered the police to the police state enabling fear gun fear narrative. They run a build your own AR-15 seminar and it's being met with protests from the gun grabbing police state enabling cattle car guides and waiting who can't fathom why people wouldn't want to allow only the state to have guns. Who who know? Uh, embattled Czech cabinet floats bill to cut off Czech, Czech, Czechs it referendum before it even happens. Ten Schools seconds. sued after allowing men to torture kids through fake scare state, scared straight program. Catalan protesters shut down highways after Pujamon arrest. And that's it. And that's it, folks. Sorry, I, I, I didn't get into the details of those last stories. So you're going to have to go to the show notes, which are, uh, yeah, it's uh, iState.tv slash H049. Go to the show notes. You can read these stories in, in, in more detail. And now here comes the official ending of this show, at least the YouTube version. That's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you would like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to hisheadlines.com and find the show notes for March 28th, 2018. Or check out the links to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video. And as I said, you can also go to iStick.tv slash H049. As always, you can find our audio podcast show on iTunes as well as all the other podcast apps that actually draw from iTunes uh, and Stitcher as well by searching for iState. If you're watching on YouTube, you miss the opening of the show, and that's terrible. And you'll also miss the very end, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. Look for the guy with, for the, with the AR-15, but uh, yeah, just remember that AR-15 was lost in a boating accident long ago. Don't forget to join me tonight on Is Daily Wednesday with the One True Niz at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principle Facebook page, uh, which is linked in the video description. Tonight's show is titled, My Mass Shooting Survivor Trumps Your Mass Shooting Survivor. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.